Okay, so here's a slide on my return to play course um, that I use a lot and credit to these guys. This is a really, really good video. And um, the guy on the left is an Olympic sprinter, guy on the right a collegiate sprinter. Now, a few subtle differences here, but I think this video illustrates a lot of where our rehab needs to be going, okay? And there's a lot of good teaching points in this slide, okay? So just to give you a taste of my approach and how I go about building a return to play system, this slide can, can show you a lot, okay? So guy on the left, have a look at his torso versus the guy on the right. The guy on the right's rib cage, it's very, very protracted, okay? He has an elevation of his rib cage, which has a reaction at his pelvis, okay? And I'll talk about that in a second. Guy on the left, upright torso. Now, some people would say weak abdominals, weak core. I'm gonna show you a slide in a second that hopefully will just make you think a little bit more higher level than, than just kind of saying that. And the one point I wanna make is before we, um, you know, we look at these videos, it's very, very easy for us to interpret say, oh, weak glutes, weak this, weak that, okay? But one of the big things that I teach in my mentorship and the return to play is asking these higher level questions of why. Why has this person or why is this person currently using this movement strategy? Okay, so torso, rib cage, that's the first thing I want to draw your attention to. Now look at the reactions as that foot hits the floor. Okay, look at this guy's left knee. Now just prior to that foot hitting the floor, look at how much adductor is working, look how much sartorius, medial hamstrings, everything's working together. The pre-tension that happens prior to that foot hitting the floor, okay, it's already in place. So a lot of this is happening subconsciously. Okay, so we're getting a good um, pre-tension, and then as that foot hits the floor, we're getting a nice core contraction of that leg, okay? Now, to bring you back, okay, to this um, right foot, okay, so as that foot hits the floor, look at where the, the, the pressure is on his foot, okay, we've got hamstring, we've got gastro, we've got quad, all working together to allow that glute to do its job okay so you might have heard me talk about in the past um, that the glute is only going to be as effective as the hamstring and gastro allows it to be so you can see here as we hip extend okay very very little knee extension okay this guy he's snapping back quite quickly again probably a reaction to his pelvis and his torso which again not weak abs I'll, I'll show what it could be in a bit now it could be weak abs but very very unlikely okay so you can see as he snaps back, okay, obviously the length tension relationship of your glutes is going to be altered here, okay. So what we're doing here on the right versus the left is we're going to do a lot of work at this point of the slide with our knee, okay. So if my knee snaps back as I'm as my body weight's going forward, that's the majority of my work is being done at the knee, okay. Now look at the guy on the left. If I delay knee extension, okay. And the two muscles that delay any extension are going to be the hamstring and the proximal gastro. Now, my knee isn't doing work here, okay? Or, well, it is isometrically, okay? But the majority of the work being done here is going to be hip and a bit of foot, okay? And then you can see a toe off, then the knee extends, okay? So, the glute is very, very reliant on the ability of that hamstring and gastro to co-contract with the quad, okay? So I'm not against the knee extending, I just don't want the knee to extend too early, okay? You look at your osteoarthritis type knee pain patients, you'll see this kind of knee snapping back quite a bit, okay? Now again, is his knee, I don't know if he's got a pain experience or not, is his knee snapping back as a reaction to this, etc. That's where we'd always have to find the true stressor specific to this person, okay? So a big part of my rehab, it's trying to get the glute to be successful by delaying knee extension, okay? And there's a lot of things we can, we can do to, to help that, okay? So again, the knee, doesn't really truly extend, okay, fully, okay? So again, we're trying to delay knee extension to allow the hip to do work. If the knee snaps back, the knee does more work. Glutes at end range, uh, or it's in a shortened position pretty quick, it's gonna have to use a lot more energy to, to do the same work, so to speak, okay? To, to propel the body forward, okay? So pre-tension, so a lot of this is happening out of subconscious control. 
and then we want to delay any extension to allow the hip to be successful okay now let's go back to this torso okay so you can see elevated rib cage protracted ribs um, this side that's going to automatically have a reaction at the pelvis okay if you elevate your ribs your your pelvis is going to enter a so why is that happening okay well we can see here when we get stressed okay or when to put it another way when we inhale okay our diaphragm is going to short when we exhale our diaphragm is going to lengthen when we inhale okay or shorten our diaphragm okay you're going to see a similar position to the guy in the video okay so again similar position to where he um was holding his rib cage okay so again is he stressed okay is the speed of the movement stressing his nervous system and he's reacting okay and a lot of people when we go into this kind of fight or flight okay we increase our breathing rate you can see a lot of people they lose the ability to to lengthen that diaphragm when we lengthen the diaphragm our transabs or rectus abdominis are in a much better length tension relationship when we start to increase our breathing rate, think of anxiety, okay, as an extreme um, kind of um, an extreme case where we're pretty much hyperventilating like this, okay? So again, we want to, if we get that rib cage down, we're going to need a diaphragm to lengthen, we're going to need the pelvic floor to ascend. That's going to automatically help the abdominals be successful. So are the abdominals weak in inverted commas because of the length tension relationship, okay? So what happens here? Okay, again, look at this guy, extension, pre-season training. He is not worried about trying to pull his belly button in or squeeze his glutes. He's just worrying about surviving, okay? So he's going to lose um, a bit of rotation, okay, um, as well, because as his um, ribcage rotates, the same thing's going to have to happen. So as he rotates to the right, his actual diaphragm on the right is going to have to lengthen, okay? So again, if we lose that ability to lengthen the diaphragm, we're going to see the low back, the hamstrings feel tight, okay? Feel tight, not necessarily are tight, okay? Big, big difference, okay? And again, a lot of this slide here, I'll talk a lot about how to progress and regress somebody, okay? So again, very, very important stuff. This is going to be the basis of what I build my rehab program for the vast majority of people, whether it's a professional athlete or whether it's um, a, a non-sporting patient in private practice, um, now appreciate that um, sometimes we want the knee to do work that's fine but what I want to do is when the knee is doing work I want everything else to be able to contribute as well so when that foot hits the floor give or take I want about 25% of work done here 25 through the quad 25 hamstring 25 glutes for argument's sake now I appreciate it's not as as clear cut as those percentages okay and a, a lot of the elastic energy happens uh, below the knee so we really need that knee to to be set up for successfully okay so if we can delay any extension okay then we put the glute in a much much better length tension relationship to do work if the knee extends quickly then the knee is going to be doing work the hips probably going to be doing less work okay so again a lot of people are getting obsessed with glutes okay i'm just gonna i'm just gonna plant the seed for you okay when you fire your glute look at the foot pressures okay a lot of people are queuing to push through the heel with glute bridges Okay, and I'm going to talk about that in a, a separate blog post.